All right, let's get started. So this is my favorite meditation class that we do the question and answer because usually my talk is like a half an hour long and I just start getting on a rant and I start repeating myself, but these I can just talk for five minutes and I get a good five minutes for each question. Um, the, I've got one question that I've already received, but I'm going to start with that one and then you guys can ask questions as well. This does not have to be questions specifically about meditation. It should be something, something deep or meaningful, something that has to do with our practice, uh, not just our physical practice, something to do with our, our mental or emotional work. And again, this is, this is my opinion from my experience. This is nowhere is it written in stone. This is not the gospel. This is not the only answer. In fact, I will change this answer. If you ask me 10 years from now, I'll give you something better. So right now, this is the, the best answer that I've got tonight. So the question that I received in my Sifu box of questions was, how do I forgive myself when I don't live up to my standards. So I don't know who wrote this question, but I have a suspicion that it was somebody who took a test recently because we had a couple of tests. And uh, it may have been somebody completely different. I don't know. But this is a common thing that people get after a test. And I even spoke to it at the end of this test. Uh, some of you guys were in class a while ago. We had uh, maybe, maybe three weeks ago a student visit who some of you guys none of you had ever met before. His name is Michael. And Michael was actually in my red sash test uh, a very long time ago. It was a grueling, horrifying experience. This <laughs> test was seven hours long. Sifu Brown had just uh, gotten a, a crown on his, his tooth had fallen off. So he had like an exposed nerve. Something terrible was going on with his dental work. And he was pissed off. And Sifu Brown is normally so mean during a test, and when he had this tooth thing going on, I mean, he was in rare form. And this test was so hard, half the people threw up during the test, and at the end of the test, Sifu Brown you know, goes down like I do, he talks about everybody, and he's, and he's talking to, to my friend Michael. Michael's actually the student who got me involved with martial arts. He brought me to my first class. And it got to him, and he, he had just crushed this test along with me and everybody else. We just worked really hard. And, and Michael said, Sifu, I just don't know if I deserve this red sash. He said, I don't know. I feel like I, feel like I could have done more. You know, I could have done this. I could have done that. There was this. Like, I, I was expecting this in the test. And Sifu said... Well, it's a good thing your opinion doesn't matter right now because I'm the one who decides if you're a red sash or not. And I've had to say that many times to people in this school that have been through far less than that. Uh, but still, like, kind of, we all have this experience where I think I could have done more. And I have my expectations. It's right there in the question. I have my expectations and I didn't live up to them. Now, first of all, uh, if you are always living up to your expectations on some level, that means that you're not expecting enough. If, you, if, you are always, if you're always meeting or exceeding what you think of yourself, then that means that you should probably expect more and you'll probably get more. On the other hand, your expectations mean nothing. It, it, in the arena of martial arts, like what, what deserves a rank, for example, you don't have to worry about that at all because I tell you if you have deserved it, if you have earned it or not. Uh, and this is a, a, a very common thing that people experience where they come in to do a class and they expect to, to perform at a certain level. They expect to be able to hit this hard or to be able to keep up a certain rate of cardio or to be able to do t this technique this quickly or to be this kind of a partner or to be this amount of focused and all that stuff. So that expectation, it lives up here in your brain and it seems to us to be a, a real concrete thing. It is a fantasy, like everything in your brain. It's a fantasy. So. I want you guys to, on the one hand, be able to set goals for yourself, to have expectations, to have a level that you want to perform at. And then, 
work as hard as you can to get there and to try to push past it, not only in class, but in everything that you do. And when you inevitably don't succeed at some point, which means that you've set like a pretty lofty goal for yourself when you don't quite make it, you don't give up and say, well, I'm just not good enough. You just keep going. And this is the concept of effortless effort or striving without striving. You've got to have something in mind that you're striving towards and you work as hard as you can. And then if you don't meet that goal, that, that should not stop you. That just means that, okay, I didn't do it today. I'm gonna to keep going, keep trying. Most of us, we have our goal, we set it, we don't make it, and then we give up. And a lot of people quit. In fact, many people have not done as well as they wanted to on a test, and they quit completely. Uh, a lot of people in lots of places in life, lots of activities, they do that. They have a place that they expected to be. They don't get there fast enough. They don't get there with the kind of pizzazz that they expected of themselves. And then they stop doing it. Uh, this is horrible. This is, this is something that you want to be able to do to, to have increasing, increasingly difficult goals and expectations and to keep tr striving and to keep failing. And the failure means absolutely nothing because this is one fantasy against another fantasy. The fantasy is all just smoke. It's nothing. So all you got to do is show up, do class, try hard. You will get better. There's no way that you can continue showing up and doing class and not get better. And it's the same thing with anything that we do in life. This is the same kind of method. You show up, you do the work, and whether or not you meet that goal that you had doesn't matter. You just keep doing the work. That's it. You're heading in the right direction. Other question. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Is that your whole question? So, in so I, I hesitate to, to talk about this sometimes because I feel like some people hear me say it and they just cop out. It's like, oh great, well then I, I quit. Not necessarily martial arts because this is fun, but like whatever it is that you're struggling with in life, uh, there is a time with most things where it becomes painfully obvious it is it is clear that this is not working and you could for example say like you're meditating and i'm meditating and and every time i meditate i get a, a terrible headache and it keeps keeps happening over and over again and i could on one hand just uh, keep going and keep getting a headache and never have a good meditation or I could quit you don't have to quit meditation you could quit doing it the way that you were doing it and you, if you're getting a terrible headache in meditation it's usually because you're crossing your eyes so instead of just looking up you're crossing your eyes this is something that happens all the time and a, a very common thing that happens with meditation is people try once and they don't do very well or they do terribly or it's a painful experience mentally or painful or, or physically painful and they just don't try it again uh, some people meditate for a long long time and they can only get up to a certain level or, or you know to a certain depth in their meditation because of something that they're doing and there might be something to change so the analogy that I like to use with this concept is you're driving on the freeway, you're on the 405, and you are going to San Diego, or let's use Tijuana since I went there recently. You're going to Tijuana, and you're driving, and you're driving for hours, and you're looking out the window, and it's nice, and you're just thinking, man, it's been a really long time. When am I gonna get to Tijuana? And then you look at a sign, and you realize that you're heading north on the 405. Now. Obviously, what you would do as a reasonable human being is exit and turn back around and start going the other direction. Or some people might just say, I never wanted to get to Tijuana anyways, I'm going home. But let's say that you have to get there. You're gonna turn around and go the other way. 
It does not matter how far you go in the wrong direction on that road unless it loops all the way around the planet, which it does not. No matter how bad the traffic is, it's not actually that you're going all the way around the planet. You're just stuck. But you can keep going north on the 405 and you're just going to run into the ocean. You will never get to Tijuana going north. So you have to turn around and go the other way. Now, it is unfortunately very rarely that obvious that what you're doing is not working and you need to change it up. And I don't like the word quit, but you know, adjust, make a U-turn, uh, do whatever it is that you need to do to, to fix this. Uh, usually it's a lot more subtle. Usually it's something that requires a lot of introspection. A great tool might be meditation. I have this this problem that I that I just keep you know running up against. I just keep slamming my head up against the wall, and I keep going harder and harder, and I and I go and I go and I go, and I'm not getting through it. Well, I might just set it aside, sit and meditate, clear my mind even for just a few minutes, and then come back to it, and and think, what could I do differently? Or is it time for me to just completely stop this thing? Uh, something that. Now, this is a whole other talk, but I'm going to try to do my 30-second version of it. Relationships. Uh, maybe you are, you are in a relationship, and I've had people ask me about like friendship or about romantic relationships, but you're in this thing, and it started off one way, and now it's another way. And if you were me in the past, the first thing that you do is, I'm out, see you later. <laughs> this is not for me. As soon as things start to go in the wrong direction, I quit. I'm not into it. Uh, and n now that I'm an old man, I've come to the realization that that doesn't always work. Sometimes there is a way to, um, you know, finesse and grow and, and change the way that things are without having to completely quit and give up. So in that situation, sometimes the right thing to do is, yes, this is a, this is a toxic, unhealthy situation and I need to exit this relationship, not see this person anymore. Sometimes the right answer is we need to communicate in a different way. We need to change the way that this is going. And a little bit of introspection, a little bit of time spent just like exploring it, like, like what really is happening here. And the problem is we, we again live in this fantasy world that we're up in our heads. Instead of just being out here in the actual situation, very often we are, uh, we are interacting with our own thoughts, what we think of this, what we think of this person, what we think of this situation. And when you're interacting with your own thoughts, there's not a lot of certainty there. But if you can get out of your head and interact with reality, whether that be the conversation that you need to have, which sometimes can be as clearly, uh, you know, put as clearly as just looking at a sign on the side of the freeway, Sometimes it's just right there, as clear as day. So I guess the answer to your question is uh, do some meditation and, and ponder it from a place where you're not up in your head. And, and this is oftentimes where people go when they meditate is they just sit and think. That's not what I'm talking about. I mean, you get to a point of clarity where there's nothing in the way. There's nothing between you and reality. And then you, you ask yourself, what is there to be done about this? Should I keep going the right way? Or do I need to turn around and do something different or shift? You know, maybe it's just take an exit and, and get on the, what else goes to, what else goes to Mexico? 710 or something? The five? Get off a different road, but keep going in the same direction. Uh, and oftentimes it's just, it's just doing something that is uh, outside of yourself, doing something that, it, that is going to connect you to the reality of the situation. I really like that. If it's a relationship, don't just sit there in your head and think about it. You know, have a conversation with somebody. And, and whatever it is, it could be something that it's just you. There's nobody else involved. So the conversation is, is with you. Take out a piece of paper, write stuff down. Think about it, figure it out. And then when it is obvious, it is absolutely stupid to keep going the wrong way. So that is the main part of this that... Like, when, when you figure out, and there have been many times in your lives, I promise you, where you have figured out that you're going the wrong way, you, yet you just keep hoping that it's, that it's going to change. And, 
you know, when it's as when it's as simple as you're going the wrong direction on the road, even though it's not like that exact situation, it's the same type of thing, it's that obvious, don't take one more step in that direction. Quit, turn around, do the thing that needs to be done. Steve Brown used to call it sticking up for lost time. It's like I spent so much oh, so much energy on this thing and so much time on this thing and it is just not going to happen. So it's not happening. Okay, move to the next thing. Other question. Spam. Uh, sir, um, how, how could I learn to be content with what is in front of me? Like, is this good enough? Mm-hmm. Um, when I know that there could be more, either from life, from myself, from whatever, but to reach that level of contentment with the present. That's easy. Just be enlightened. <laughs> I mean, that's what it is. We're, we are, as human beings, living in, in this plane of existence, uh, identifying as human beings, identifying as the ego, we are stuck in this cycle of desire where uh, I want to be happy, I want to be content. But as long as I attach my happiness or my contentment to something that's outside of myself, which is what we do all the time. It's, you know, I know my car is nice, but I just saw this this model that's one year nicer drive down the street, one, one newer year, and that's just a little bit nicer than what I got. So I'm pretty happy, but I could be just a little bit happier if I just got that, that next model of car, or the house was a little bit bigger, or my, you know, my relationship is a little bit better, or my job was better, or if I was more impressive in this way or that way. And, and these things, you know, the obvious things that I, that I name are, are superficial and, and obviously just material, and you can at least conceptualize how that's never going to get you anywhere. Uh, there was a, I, th I think it was the founder of PayPal or something, one of these companies who made a ton of money and had, could have bought any car that they wanted, decided like, I'm gonna drive a Prius. I'm pretty sure it was a Prius. And they said, all these other people who made all this money in tech, they're all driving Lamborghinis and Maseratis and uh, whatever the other fancy cars are. I don't know. I'm never going to have one. But he's like, well, well, there's always some kind of fancier, more expensive car. I'm just going to go right here and be in the Prius. The Prius is going to get me where I need to go, and I'm not trapped in this cycle of always trying to get the next thing. So this is, I mean, what we're hitting on is, is one of the, the hardest and most uh, important things that we can do in life. To become content means that I am content with what I have right now. I'm not looking at what could be out there that could be better. And you gotta recognize that it's almost a guarantee that there is something better out there. You will never have the nicest house in the world. You will never have the best relationship in the world. Only one person gets to have the best relationship in the world. It's very unlikely that it's you. If it's you, I'm so happy for you, but it's not. So, so you have to, you have to you know, choose. Choose what you have. Choose who you are with. Choose the car that you drive. And, uh, you know, it's... it's it's so impossible because we're we are set up to to always be comparing, to always be judging, and this is what I have, but this is the other thing that is possible. The grass is always greener; it always will be. So you have to first of all recognize the futility of all of that in every arena, and this this also flies in the face of setting goals. But it's it's back to the first thing that I was talking about, where you set a goal and you work as hard as you can, and when you don't get it, you're okay with it. This is, this is very much related to that. The reason that I can be okay with it is because uh, my happiness, my contentment, uh, my identity uh, of who I am is not caught up in that thing of needing to get to the next thing. So how you do that? Practice? I heard this great phrase and I talked about it last week at the long meditation. It, we're, we're, we're looking to stop identifying uh, or break the habit 
of human identification, breaking the habit of identifying as the ego or the small self. And when I heard that, I thought, that's one of the most brilliant things ever. Because if you think of it like a habit, then it, then there are, there are concrete steps that I can take, right? So I recognize that this is what I'm doing. I recognize that this is what I've got, and I you know, wish that I had the next bigger thing. As soon as I recognize that, I just go back to what I've got and I find something that I'm grateful for. Uh, I, I really allow myself to, in that moment, be happy and, and celebrate what I've got where I am. And, uh, you know, there are lots of different things that you could do, but it kind of breaks down to that kind of habit. You know, I recognize this thought and I'm trying to, I'm trying to replace that habit with a different habit. The habit of, of being very happy with what I've got. And you can certainly find, with anything and anyone up to a reasonable point, some, at least one great thing about it. And so, so choose that. We need to, we need to be uh, totally able to live in this situation that we're in, recognizing that on some level, it's the only way that it was ever going to be. Right there, this is as long as we're living in this physical universe. There's, you know, on some level you could say there's free will, and on some level you could say, well, we're we're given the the hand that we're dealt, and this is it. And you can be happy with it, or you can be upset with it. This is always the two choices that you have. Uh, how to choose that on a regular basis. Is, is again like I'm meditating and I'm and I'm aware of that thought as soon as I get it and then I replace it with something else. I replace it with some kind of thought of gratitude, of gratefulness, of I'm I'm happy that I've got this. And you don't have to go the other end and say like, well, yeah, this car is nice, I've got this car, but I could be driving around in, you know, that Pinto that I had when I was in high school and that thing's crap. You don't need to compare it to anything. You just are recognizing what's great about where you are and what you've got as a habit. Good luck. Oh, I've got uh, maybe time for one more. Anybody have anything pressing? Go ahead, sir. Um, I was just wondering about a time you applied effortless effort to uh, building a dojo. So a time when maybe there was like too much effort and, there was, and you realized there was time to change. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, the, so the question about effort, applying that principles of effortless effort in, in here, in the school. And I think if my teacher, Sifu Brown, were, were present along with me every step of the way, he would say, you never put in too much effort. Because what, and part of it is his perception of me, which is largely based on reality, which is I've got a horseshoe up my butt and like things just happen more easily. And, and this is on some level, yeah, I mean like, I live in a situation, I come from, from a, a, a life, you know, with my parents and family that are very supportive and, and I, I have no, uh, no question that I just was born into a much better situation than the vast majority of people on the planet. And I appreciate that and I love it. Uh, and on the other part of it, there's my perception of it, which is just like, you know, I, I like to think of it as I'm lucky and things just happen to go my way, even though, yeah, I'm in the dojo 60 hours a week or more and I'm teaching every single class and there are like two other people in the country who do that, Sifu Brown and, and Sifu Donahue, and I think even he has somebody who teaches some of the classes. But it's, uh, you know, in my case, I, I, I think it really hinges on that perception. So... If I ever feel like I'm just like running up against a wall, uh, I recognize that right away because I, as a child, was incredibly lazy. I mean, you guys all think that you're lazy sometimes. I I'm, would make you look like the hardest working per person on the planet. I would come home from school and sit and watch TV all night. I never did my homework. I didn't care about anything. Uh, I got I got fired or like ushered out of of pretty much every real job that I had outside of teaching martial arts, and 
it was it was just like I wasn't interested. I could not have been less interested in trying hard at anything. So I recognize it when it happens, when I'm when I am trying hard, and I really appreciate it now. Um, but and this is like a real weird way of answering your question. Ask me again, and I'll give you a different answer. But this is like um, what I get is is now trying hard does not feel like trying hard. It feels like fun for me because I chose when I just started doing martial arts uh, for the first time, I, I realized that actually it, it can be fun to try hard and to, and to have that barrier and to, and to run up against it and eventually push through it where I recognize that this thing is so hard and so complicated and, and so you know, beyond my abilities right now, that I will never get there without putting absolutely everything that I have into it. And the first little bit was was really rough. And then I started to just realize that like, I'm sweating and pushing myself like I've never done before. And I'm smiling and at the end of class, it's just like it went by in a flash because I was just allowing myself to have fun the entire time. So, uh, there are certainly things that I do in in running a business. I mean, there there's no shortage of of pains in in running a business. I think anywhere that you are, uh, I spend most of my time teaching and, and doing the part of it that I love. But in any of it, what I what I try to do is as soon as I recognize that I'm that I'm doing this, and if it has any kind of a of a of a negative feeling to me where it's like oh this is this is effort i'm having to push i'm having to stretch uh beyond myself and do something that i'm not comfortable with then i i just connect that back to my practice and say this is part of my martial arts practice you know running the business or doing this or that outside of the dojo this is all part of my practice and what i love about my practice is that it's hard and that I have to push myself, and I enjoy it. It's fun for me that way. So uh, this is a, a fundamentally different way of looking at life, but if you can flip that on its head and, and really enjoy working, then it's kind of like nothing feels like this for any longer than you choose for it to feel like this. So, so oftentimes it's just like a moment of that and then I realize this is, this is exactly what I want. I'm, I'm choosing to do this. This is where I want to be. This is what I want to do. And if I ever decided that it wasn't, I'd be out of here. See you later. And it's not going to happen here, but could happen with a lot of different things. Uh, and if it, if it really is, because, because we can get to this point where we, we are completely able to choose, if it becomes something that you no longer are able to choose, then choose something else. Right now you're gonna to choose to meditate. Your only choice that is available to you is to sit still and quiet. And everything else is up to you. You can choose to sit and just think about what happened in your day. You can choose to focus on the breath. You can choose that when your mind wanders, you bring it back to the breath without it seeming like a real, you know, terrible experience. Or you can choose to get pissed off at yourself. I was thinking again, what's wrong with me? And, and get really annoyed at yourself. All of that is totally up to you. It's your choice. So with that, let's sit comfortably. <laughs>